Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today, uh, especially in person. I know it's been uh, some weird, like the weird, the last years have been a bit weird. So at least from my point, not sure if you can relate. This is, this is like, I, I haven't seen this many people in like the last two or three years, so it's a bit different. Uh, so thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for the people that are uh, virtually attending. Um, my name is Madalina. I'll be one of your uh, co-hosts today. Uh, I am a software engineer in Intel's resource management space in Ireland. I have a web service and distributed uh, systems background, but I recently moved into the cloud native and Kubernetes space. I won't be giving this presentation alone. I'm here with my teammate, Danicio, and he's going to say a couple of words about himself. Uh, hello. Um, uh, my name is Denis Otogashes, so uh, I am Madalina, I am also a uh, cloud native engineer at Intel. Um, my background is uh, science, um, but a um, couple years ago um, I got the uh, opportunity to fast track and get a, a degree on the soft development. And, uh, and then, so I ended up on this huge, incre incredible company that is Intel. So. Um, we both are based in Ireland. Uh, we work on the team, on the resource management team. And in this team, um, we have so many uh, different projects, but uh, each one then was your challenge. It's your, the challenge and so on. But um, uh, we, we always look in on different ways to, to make an improvement, uh, kind of uh, different uh, innovations related. Um, but with the mindset that was talked on this morning, uh, related to sustainability. So, as I said, we um, we have a dual school projects, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy. So, uh, Madeline and I is a first time um, Kubicon, uh, so um, it's really great to be here. And uh, yeah, um, today uh, because of you, and thank you to give you this opportunity. We're going to talk about one of those projects that is. Uh, related on the, um, you know, the smart scheduling and, uh, and, and then we follow up on uh, uh, the presentation. That's so I stop to talk and hand, hand back to Madhya. Okay. Thank you. So, I, um, so the name of our talk is Working Your Cluster Smarter Scheduling Decisions for Your Workload. The aim of it is to show you how you can leverage telemetry from your own cluster to make better scheduling decisions. Um, we're going to start off with why resource states and scheduling matter. How would, they, how would you go around combining them and what's the what are the benefits of doing so? We're going to touch on one of our projects, which is called Telemetry Aware Scheduling. It's an open source project. Denise spoke a bit about it. We're going to look at a high level intro, system design, and then the basic building blocks. We're going to see Telemetry Aware Scheduling, or TAS, because it's a bit of a mouthful, uh, in, um, in a quick demo. And we're going to conclude the session with uh, a bit of Q&A. So I'm guessing most of you here today run your workloads on clusters, whether they are on premise or via or, or, or hosted by a cloud provider. Um, especially if you work with big clusters, you have a large number of nodes. And with that comes the problem of how do you deal with um, failures? Because it's the more hosts you actually have in a cluster, the harder it gets for you to pinpoint with like accurate precision when a host or a node can become unhealthy. So when you design a system or even think of a system, you look at how will I deal with these fail failure scenarios. Some ideas that would come to mind is whenever you want to schedule a workload, you can avoid scheduling to an unhealthy node. Or once you know that a node becomes unhealthy, you migrate your workloads away. Um, one level going above this that you can think about is I know my workload, so I know what I want to do, and then I know my cluster, I know my hardware configurations. What if I take the metrics of interest, like temperature or power or load, and I make a ranking of my nodes and I pick the best outcome? Especially if you're in Kubernetes, you don't want to also reinvent the wheel, so you're going to think of how can I make my system work with out-of-the-box tools like 
like the Kubernetes scheduler or the GPO aware scheduler. So the next topic that I want to talk about is uh, at least in how we thought about hand handling telemetry and smarter scheduling decisions. And this is where I'm going to talk a bit about one of our projects. It's called Telemetry Aware Scheduler. Uh, as I said before, it's an open source project. And as the name says, and I guess you already thought about it, it uses telemetry to help make scheduling and descheduling decisions. It's an extender of the Kubernetes scheduler, and that comes with a couple of perks. The first thing you think of is, because it's an extender, I have the capability of filtering and uh, scoring nodes. And then the spice that I think comes a bit above is I can also utilize node affinity rules via fixed and also custom labels. And we're going to look at this in a bit. When you're talking about scheduling, at least in, in Kubernetes and with the default scheduler, one way you can actually touch upon um, a recommended pod like a, rec a pod's recommended schedule is via policies. That is pretty much how you would tell the scheduler how to react, what actions to take, and, and when. In our specific case, we work with something called telemetry-aware uh, telemetry scheduling policies, and we're going to look at examples. And these, this policy is structurally based on rules, which in turn are based on metrics that actually come from your own cluster. Um, if you have more complex scenarios, we also uh, have a capability in telemetry or scheduler or TAS that we support multi-metric rules. So you can build rules that contain multiple metrics and you can link them together with operators such as any of or all of. So to set telemetry where scheduling up, you don't need much. The first component that you need is a metrics pipeline because we're talking about telemetry. And I, I'm going to talk about the first part I'm going to talk about is in the top left corner. So the metrics pipeline, you need that because you need to expose, collect, store, and then make metrics available to the Kubernetes custom metrics API. In our specific case, we're using the Prometheus node exporter to make telemetry available. To us, we use Prometheus for collection and storage, and we use the adapter to make our metrics ready, make it them ready for the custom metrics API. The second part that I want to talk about is the actual telemetry aware scheduler. It works together with the default scheduler. So every time the default scheduler actually wants to make a decision, it reaches out to TAS. If the workload has a policy that TAS recognizes, it just returns like a suggested outcome of that pod placement to the default scheduler. The last piece of the puzzle is the actual telemetry aware policy. And as I said, this is actually how you control the actions. It's a custom resource known by the telemetry aware scheduler. And um, you, the way you actually work with it is in, your, uh, in a high level workload type, like a deployment, you would just add a label saying which policy you want to link it to. But don't be afraid, we're going to show you examples. As I said before, structurally, this policy has a couple of rules, and TAS itself supports uh, four types. And I'm going to ask Denise to come along and show you what are these four types and how they behave and how do they actually look like. Thank you, Madalina. So uh, thank you for the nice intro on that. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, the, a little bit more the structure of, the, of the, another piece of the building block, that is the pol uh, chess policy. So the chess policy is composed of four strategies. Okay? Um, the two first strategies are directly related to the, 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 schedule, the native schedule or the full schedule, uh, which is telemeter where schedule works like a standard. The two last, the two last uh, strategies are more uh, communicating directly with the, the, the full schedule via the uh, node affinity rules. So we can go, yeah, uh, thank you. So this, go to take a look on the first strategy that is down schedule. Uh, each one of those strategies are composed uh, for an action. So, um, and the metric name and the target value and the operator. So uh, we say that the, the, the strategy or, or 
is broken or uh, in case of don't scatter when the, the metric rules are broken. So what that means, so in this case, we have the health metric, uh, uh, metric as an example. So if you know closely, you define, uh, you have that metric. And if that metric is at that current state, have that value that is equal to one in this case, so that node particularly going to be uh, put out from the scattering process. So uh, that's the equivalent of the filtering process on the, the, the full scattering. And uh, now the second, the second strategy, the scattering strategy. So it's the one that actually give you a kind of priority or those nodes that have been uh, available, if I may say, to the cluster. So once that you, you only have those up, suitable nodes, which one that you think that will be uh, more adequate, so they're going to get a kind of the priori priority uh, in front of the other. So that's you can define on with this strategy using a, another metric. Uh, if, in this case, it's a temperature that is like good opportunity to, you know, to, to save it if you consider the temperature as a power uh, related. So, so the, in this example that we have, that strategy just saying that, okay, nodes with uh, that metric temperature, the lowest value going to have the high priority. So now, uh, the move on from that. Now we are looking on the discharge strategy. Discharge strategy is uh, from that uh, telemeter where it's uh, use the, the node affinity rules. So it uh, doesn't communicate directly with the, the full schedule. In this case, you have in your deployment file, you have no way to link it using the node affinity uh, rules. So if you have a pod that eventually break those rules, the pod going to be, uh, uh, sorry, the node uh, that have the metric that being uh, broken going to be labeled. So uh, it is, uh, in this case, the hard code labels is just going to receive a label, say, violating. So once that label is present on, on the node, we can use uh, other components, uh, external components. In this case, uh, we use uh, the Kubernetes the scheduler uh, that identify that the node, uh, well, there is one node that broke on the node affinity rules. And proceeding that way, you can go uh, to invict the pod and rescheduler and so on. So the last strategy is uh, one uh, recent uh, feature added to to, the, to our, our application, that is a labeling. Basically, uh, it's work like a discharge plus uh, strategy, but the main difference here is that you can customize, the user can customize the type of the label uh, that uh, you want uh, a node receive if you break that rules. So uh, you can think like that, that uh, you are transferring information uh, that is some metric to the node. So, why this uh, is important, uh, this kind of flexibility. Uh, that that would come from uh, one of the collaboration uh, across our, our, our uh, company. Uh, so we developed together with the, uh, a team in Finland uh, where they're interested in, in use cases related to GPU. So which they, they have also GPU OS scheduling that another open source project that is uh, we work together with telemetry OS scheduling. So, Let's, let's imagine, uh, sorry, just that kind of thought here. Now, let's imagine we have a cluster, and this cluster have a node, and this node have attached, suppose, two GPUs. Now, uh, imagine that we have, you're able to write an telemetry where scheduled policy that tell you that uh, if you're metrically related, like, you might say, power consumption, break the rules, so if you have a one GPU that break the rules and then you have a workload that tells you that one pod per request, one GPU, you have one GPU that have a problematic, consume a lot of power, but the other GPU is working fine. If you use this schedule, uh, that node that have those two GPUs going to mark as a violator and all the pods going to be uh, discarded and evicted. So that's not a, a, a suitable situation. So, and we, we 
create this new feature that are customized in the label. That way we can transfer the information, just tell uh, and label the node that have those two GPUs, which one GPU have a high power consumption, say, you can write a kind of the label, like say, disable card GPU one, or something like that. And then once that is, you have that information on that node, uh, GPU always can to kick off and do the business there and uh, uh, make it ready for, for the Kubernetes discover to discover just that pod that use that GPU that has a high power consumption. That, that's, uh, yeah, I think that's enough. We can go uh, for the demo. Uh, but um, we, we have to make a kind of deployment. And it's, those are the three files that we use, normally use when we work with the discarder, uh, Kubernetes discarder. So uh, you can see on the, on the board the, all the sections that are related. So the, you, you have the, um, the deployment file. In this case, we have an application, simply Nginx. And uh, we're going to deploy five pods or that, five pods. And you have the, the link to the telemeter wire scatter. So you identify that each one of those pods is going to be associated to a, a policy related to HS. And uh, the other section is, is where they know the things who's uh, coming out. Because we have uh, uh, in all GS policy, the discard, uh, sorry, the labeling strat strategy. And the final one, the uh, simple policy for the cabinet discard that just tell you to invict the part that violate any of the finish rules. So, um, so I um, apologize if some demo effect happened here, even if it's a recorder, but okay. Um, let's start here. Um, this example here, we have a closet that composes the three workers and the one control brain, what the normal is stand. So the only the worker knows the received parts. So uh, we have uh, the, le uh, the right side, is we have the matrix associated with each one of the workers. And uh, on the further right, you have the, excuse me, the labels, the labels associated uh, for each one of those nodes. Now, um, on the top, uh, panel is where the, uh, you're going to observe all the resources that have been called uh, during the demo. So like the pods that have been deployed and all, all, the, all the operations that happen on that. The middle is where you have the information that show the event which you want those steps on the bottom and eventually you're going to see part of the logs. Uh, so we already have deployed the telemetry web scheduling and the, the policy. The policy again has been shown on the, on the uh, left side, so uh, it composed for this demo the three uh, strategy. Again, down scatter, scatter metric, and the labeling. So each one again have your own metric rules. So um, again, the down scatter is going to tell for the JS uh, that to fill the note that violated that rule. So we can see that work node three that have that health node health metric. The health metric name that is equal to one, that's the metric that that current state is showing. So you look at on the, the, on the telemetry, on the GIS policy, you have that, that, that exactly that value should not be there. In that case, that node will be put out on the, on the scheduling process. So um, it, that, therefore, worker three is out, filter out. Um, so the next, the next one is, um, excuse me, uh, the schedule of metrics, uh, st uh, strategy. So as I mentioned before, it's based on the priority and the metric used here is it's simply temperature and uh, going selected between those nodes, the, uh, the works that uh, have lowest temperature, they're going to receive the, the going to receive majority of the pods. In this case, uh, we only have five, so they're all then going to land. And the node that have the highest priority, the lowest temperature, then the work they able to. So they deploy our demo, and we can see that the content create and so on, and that you have all the five being uh, up and running on the work too. Here, which is an example of the, the logs. So the logs, 
on the chair has to show the steps. Each step did that happen? Um, I think it's appear clear that so in that find what the polis, the strategy polis, you now the filtering part, and then go to uh, select what nodes are available uh, that doesn't break the down schedule rule, and then go to the prioritization part that is basically going uh, related to the schedule metric strategy and give the ranking and uh, select based on this ranking sent back to the full schedule. Okay, walk through to have the high priorities, and that way we go. Okay. Now, um, we have now five pods running on the walk too. So there is reasonable to, to think that, okay, so we have one metric that's related on the memory use. So, so that we, what do we expect? That the value metric for them, the, the, the nodes that have that metric should increase in case on the, on the walk too. So, because we, 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 yeah, we have more positive opinion than that. So we do a little bit of the push on that in order just to go above the threshold uh, related to the labeling strategy. So we saw, just saw that the labeling happening there. Oh, sorry. Uh, so the labeling happening that, and then we take a look on the logs, and it's just saying that, oh, okay, the metric value on the walk too just cross over the threshold and uh, for the labeling strategy, break the debt, and then uh, uh, she is going to write off the label that is being described on the policy to the, uh, to the node that broken that rules. So just continue that, and that, that's what is actually just describing on the log. Okay, so that, that's what is at the moment. So um, we have what? We have now two nodes that are not able to receive. So one because of breaker they don't scatter us, and uh, the other one that's because of the, uh, the finished rules and uh, you know, able to receive it. So the, what we expect is just one left, and uh, if we increase the number of the pods to be de uh, deploying on the, uh, you know, in the cluster, so it's just not uh, upscale. And uh, they should uh, end up, as I just showed that, on the worker, on the, uh, on the first one. So, and uh, yeah, so that again, so you just show the process, how it's going. And uh, you have the label on the worker, and we get what is back and that. Um, we still have a pods on the worker too, so they, most likely not happen, and that's sort all of, uh, depending on the situation and depending on your policy. But we, we would like to move as that migrate from a more suitable node. So, GS, as I mentioned, we mentioned before, that we are not capable to invict the pod. So, in this case, uh, we, we have to call the help and help it on the, on the, the Kubernetes schedule. And uh, once that we have the policy, uh, the config, configuration deployed, we just deploy the application, and you see immediately that uh, this community is going to look at and see there are uh, pods, uh, pods associated on the nodes that break their finish rules. And then immediately this, uh, evicted that. So the community is going work on the cycle, so once that you deploy, immediately do those checks, and then, yeah. So going to put uh, the other pods on the queue, uh, in the, come on the cycle to the full schedule and find the better, better node available that is working uh, on the worker. Now we don't have any more uh, pods running on the worker too. Again, so no pods, so memory should go down. The memory uses should go down. So the metric associated should at least go to back on the same levels uh, and uh, when that happens, okay, uh, we don't have the labeling strategy uh, rules and broken anymore. So that we expect the label to be removed, and that's what happened. Once that happened, uh, work two, or work node two is again back on alive, so ready to receive the pods again. So, but the work now have a ten pods of the same story, 
memory use is going to increase. Mem so I expect break the rules because go above the threshold, the label is threat. Uh, TS write the labels on that nodes, and um, once the label is there, remember the Kubernetes the scheduling now is up and running on the cluster. You're going to look on the node list and you see there is one node that breaking the affinity rules, and the one is so there. Invicted all the pods on that on that node, and that we scatter to the worker that are available uh, and in the cluster at the moment. Okay, so yep, um, that's it. So, okay. so before we conclude this session, just wanted to give give out a bit more details. So as I said, the Lemtreware scheduler is an open source project, and above you can find the link to our public repo. If you're interested, you can look, uh, look at the repo, uh, push PRs or issues, if you see anything that you would wanna work on or fix. Uh, if you're also, if you're interested about features, you can reach out to us via Kubernetes, the Kubernetes Slack room or emails. You have our emails in the bottom right. You can also find us in our booth, so feel free to stop by and talk to us. If you're um, interested about learning a bit more, like architectural-wise, a bit more details, you have links to uh, two of our white papers, so feel free to check them out if you want more details architecturally. Um, this is it in terms of our presentation. Thank you very much for, for your attention, and uh, I'm gonna open it up for questions if you have any. Thank you. Hello, I'm here, over here. Sorry, <laughs> lights no, are in No problem. Uh, what you show us, uh, the scheduler uh, has now a dependency with the metrics uh, pipeline. Mm -hmm. If the metrics pipeline fails, uh, will scheduling be blocked or is it able to still schedule ignoring the telemetry over scheduling? I mean, uh, okay. we, we, we now have a dependency of the metrics mm -hmm. pipeline. Is it a hard dependency? Is it uh, optional? Uh, I don't know. I, I would say it, it might not be able to react as fast, so you might need to wait a bit until the metrics com comes back online. But I, I think I need to test a bit more this scenario. I think this, this is my opinion, so I think you need to wait until it comes back. Yeah. Oh, okay. And do you want to add more details to this? I, uh, okay. Sorry. Wait, uh, wait. Can you come back? To, can you come yeah. to us once we finish and we can talk about this more? Because I can't hear you. Sorry. Okay, I need to know where to look. Okay. Or us to look. Yeah, I was going to ask what happens when the telemetry scheduling you have configured for, for a deployment or whatever. Mm -hmm doesn't find any switchable node, but you still have available nodes. What happens in this scenario? So I think it will just look continuously for nodes. So if something happens and maybe your node comes back online, it might just like continuously look for nodes. If, if it wasn't, maybe you might need to go back and alter your policies. At least that's, that's what I think it would do. The, So TAS, yeah, so with TAS, you would get a suggestion of a placement. So maybe when that's not running, you would just default to whatever the default scheduler wants to do. And your policies might not actually, the TAS policies might not work. Okay. Any? Hi. Okay. So, okay. so the metrics uh, pipeline, it generates new metrics, or you also work with default metrics, and the telemetry policy can also be applied on the default metrics from the nodes or any custom metrics that are generated like uh, via okay. script or manually? Can you? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, can you hear me? So, basically, you can use uh, uh, any metrics because it depends on your exporter. 
So in this example, we use a node exporter for the primitives. You can, uh, you can use also Cubimetric uh, API as well. So it's, it's, it's up to you to select what type, what type of the method you are interested in. So uh, CollectED also can be used as well. So. OK. All right. Thank you. So I'm going to read out a question from the online users. Uh, does TAS work well with topology spread constraints to ensure an even distribution of application pods? So the even distribut uh, distribution or the deployment, uh, I, I assume. I guess they're asking, yeah, deployment or stateful set or? Um, yeah, I can't, uh, I can't think. Yeah, we have to think about that. This is a good question. Um, I can't yeah, maybe, maybe follow up in Slack afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah if, we do. Yeah, yeah. If whoever can ping us yeah. on Slack yeah. Yeah. with the question. Yeah, sure. We'll sure. try our best to answer. OK, thank you. Uh, we've got a couple more minutes in the room. Uh, I think he was first. Uh, hello. I have a small question. So what will happen after our pod is scheduled? So when it's uh, during uh, scheduling, uh, the pod is placed one of the nodes. And metric uh, changes. Uh, will it, it pod will be rescheduled during execution, or it's ignored during execution? So your question is to know what happened on the pod after the scheduler. Uh, yes, true. So actually, default scheduler usually check these rules when he uh, decides okay. where to schedule port, and it ignores uh, changes further. So in this case, a metric is always changing. Yeah. And during execution, it changed. Uh, what yeah. will happen? OK. Um, I think there is a, a time related on that. So it depends on the how, how, uh, how the process it takes. And uh, if it eventually, yeah, if it did, you get that time where the the pods have been discarded and discard the full schedule catching on that, it, it, it might have that kind of conflict. Yeah, it's uh, something that we have a thought because we basically use the discarder just from the system uh, in terms of the show the, the effectiveness of the of the of the application. So, but yeah, we yes, thank you. Uh, we will take a look at that as well. Okay, I think I think we have time for one more. And um, hello. Um, so my question is: Is this scheduler going to respect the PDB constraints that we have for a for a pod for a deployment? Can you repeat that? Can you repeat yeah. the question? Yeah, yeah. Is this scheduler going to respect the restrictions set by a PDB by a pod disruption budget? How is that going? How, I mean, how is this going to work together with a PDB set for a for a pod, for a deployment or a pod? I don't think we tested that approach. Uh, I don't know what the PDB we done. I think we need to look a bit more into this because I don't think I understand what, at least I'm, I'm not able to understand what you're asking me, sorry. Oh, sorry, I mean a pod disruption budget, it's a configuration or a policy that you define in Kubernetes in order to, for, uh, to restrict how Kubernetes evicts pod, pods from a node or the number of, or the minimum number of pods that you have to run for a certain application. So I'm asking that because if the scheduler is going to move uh, pods around, it could actually violate the restrictions set by the PDB or the constraints. I don't know what PDB does. Um, does that make sense? No, not quite. I think I need to follow up. Sorry. At least okay. I have. Yeah, thank you. Okay. okay, well, thank you very Sorry. much. And uh, that's, we're at time. Thank you. <laughs>